I have a gigantic planet between my eyes right there it is because summer is coming close to an end and school is just around the corner and I'm really stressing out so can anyone relate? anyone? no? just me? to my channel if you are new my name is Mimi thank you so much for stopping by and subscribing as you guys can see by the title in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys the rundown on what to expect on your first day of college a couple of years ago I filmed my one and only college video and I just want to quickly say thank you so much for your guys' sweet and positive feedback on that video I did not expect that video to turn out the way it did and it just means so much to me and it just warms my heart and if you guys want me to continue making videos all about college, leave your questions and concerns in the comments down below. I'll be more than happy to continue this, maybe start a college series here on my channel. Alright, so let's just get started. There are a couple of things I would suggest you guys doing the night before your first big day of college. The first thing is to look over your class schedule. You can go on your university's website, print out a map of your campus. You can highlight where all of your classes are and see how long it takes you to get from each class. Keep in mind and ask yourself, are your classes back to back or do you have a break in between? If you do, how long of a break? Have all of that situated the night before because although you may not know what you're doing on your first day, at least you'll know where you're going. Why did I just do that? <laughs> I'm sorry, that just came out. Okay, but seriously, at least you know where you're going. You'll go into your first day of college with confidence. The next thing I suggest doing is to think about transportation and parking. Are you going to drive yourself to school? If so, where are you going to park? Or if you're not driving yourself, are you gonna get dropped off? Are you gonna take the bus? Or are you gonna take an Uber? That's like the new thing now. Whatever it is, have that situated because the last thing you wanna be stressing out already the first thing in the morning is finding parking or how to get to school. For me personally, I drove to school and I purchased a parking pass. I know different universities have different policy I guess on parking. Sometimes they have- oh sorry guys, I forgot to mute my phone but sometimes they have like a parking garage or a specific lot where you can purchase a pass and park there and there's multiple parking lots the nicer parking lot it is the more expensive it's going to be not everyone has that luxury to purchase a parking pass so it's totally understandable but keep in mind if you're going to park in a free or affordable parking lot it is probably going to be really saturated trust me when i say this it is super crowded you're probably gonna have to go to school 30 minutes to an hour early you really want to ensure your spot on the bus to get to your parking lot onto campus on time if you give yourself enough time to get to school you're gonna feel more relaxed 30 minutes to an hour sounds a lot of time but honestly it's so worth it because you never know what's gonna happen there could be traffic you can look over your notes right before class if you need to print out something you can go ahead and do that so it's a good habit to create for yourself i know it's your first day of school and you want to be there on time and also find your way around campus there's this quote that i learned from my high school teacher that i would never forget if you're early you are on time if you're on time you are late and if you're late you are dead so i just wanted to share that with you guys all right on to the fun part your first day of school what should you expect so the first thing is you're going to go into class right off the bat you're gonna already make one of the biggest decisions and that is choosing your seat whatever seat you choose the seat could potentially be yours for the rest of the semester so you gotta choose wisely what i suggest is sitting within what is called the t-zone and that is the first couple of front rows and all the seats in the center from front to back students who generally sit within this zone they are more likely to succeed and pass the class and it makes sense you can see the board better you can see your professor you're more alert and attentive and you're gonna participate in class when i was in high school i've always wanted to sit in the way back and i always pray to god that my sister i mean my sister what am i talking about my teacher would assign me 
the seat in the back because you know in high school you had assigned seats but you know in college you have the freedom to choose your own seat and that's why it's awesome because you can sit wherever you feel comfortable and this is why you should go to class early because like the saying early birds get the worms early birds also get to choose the best seats <laughs> You don't have to sit within the T-zone, it's just recommended. I'm sure there's students who sit outside of the T-zone and still pass the class. When I was in high school, I would not want to participate in class because I was a little bit shy. But in college, I felt more different. I wanted to participate. I learned that that's what helped me. It's kind of like repeating back what your professor said. Maybe that can help you too. I get distracted really easily, so I always sit in the front row always you would be surprised how many people still go on social media in class after spending thousands and thousands of dollars on school you would think that they could just last an hour without going on their phone or social media it happens so there's nothing you can do about it other than picking a seat and try to avoid that as much as possible after you're all situated in your seat and you're happy where you are the next thing you should expect is going over your syllabus so I made a list of things that you should look for in your syllabus. The first thing is your professor's or TA's name. This is so important and it's sad because not every student knows their professor's name and I think it's important that you should because I would be hurt if my professor didn't know my name although they probably don't because they have hundreds and hundreds of students but the fact that you're taking their class and you don't know your professor's name, that's a little bit sad. So get to know your professor. A TA is a teaching assistant and that is your professor's teaching assistant and sometimes they teach the class as well. TAs are usually students who have taken that class before and passed with flying colors. So TAs are your best friends. Get to know them. They are students just like you. TAs are also one to maybe possibly give you a grade in the class as well, not just your professor. The next thing you should look for in your syllabus is your TAs or professor's email. Have it somewhere safe and somewhere that you know you can find right away because life happens. You never know when you'll need to contact your professor and let them know whether you're not gonna make it to class or even if you have a questions, a questions, <laughs> Mimi, your grammar. Even if you have a question on an assignment or something like that, you can easily just find their email and shoot them a question. Shoot them a question. You can email them and hope to God that they reply because sometimes they don't reply right away. True story. I like to personally collect all of the emails of all of my professors that semester and put it in the front page of my planner. I literally write out their name and their email. The next important thing on your syllabus is the due dates. This is probably the first thing we honestly look at. Your syllabus is going to contain due dates for your assignments, your quizzes, well sometimes quizzes, but mostly exams and readings. The reason why I say sometimes quizzes is because some professors out there are tricky and they like to throw in surprise quizzes so they don't have it on the syllabus. But if you look at the syllabus, there sometimes could be a pattern. Like one time I noticed that my professor would throw in a surprise quizzes every three chapters. So I always kind of mentally prepare myself for that. You can maybe crack the code as well and just kind of see the pattern that your professor likes to throw in a surprise quiz. With all of the due dates that you are given, make sure you write it out whether on a planner, laptops you can use like an eye calendar. I also like to color coordinate my classes as well and maybe this tip can help you. Like for my science classes, I like to have green because I think of life that's just how my brain works and like for math I think of red and for psychology I think of purple because emotions I don't know am I weird that's how just my brain works and I find that it helps me so when I open up my planner already I know what each color means and I can see what I need to focus on that day or that week and etc etc another thing i learned in high school is that it is easier to keep up than to catch up i learned this from the same teacher so if you are ever watching my video thank you so much you have changed my life for the better don't fall behind on your assignments and readings and your class and you won't have to ever worry about feeling lost or whatever okay 
The next thing is office hours. Oh my gosh, this is super, super important. Memorize it, tattoo it across your face, whatever you have to do. Go to your office hours. This is going to save you a lot, a lot of time with studying because instead of trying to figure it out for yourself, you can just go and ask your professor. Our professors are super busy and the fact that they put time out of their busy schedule for you to come and visit them and ask them any questions, but not enough students utilize this. So definitely take advantage of that. Utilize your office hours and if you're afraid of asking a stupid question, just know that there is no such thing as a stupid question. The only thing that's stupid is not asking a question and not speaking up. I know for sure that's how I felt. I was so scared of like embarrassing myself and asking like a common sense or obvious question that I should already know about. But you know, everyone is learning different things. Everyone is on different page. If you're stuck on something that's easy to someone, don't be afraid to speak up and learn for yourself because at the end of the day, it's your grade and no one else's. The next thing that's on your syllabus that's super important are the list of your textbooks and books that you'll need for the semester. Now you're probably gonna ask me, Mimi, do I need all these books? And I'm gonna reply and say, sometime. My question for you is, are you going to read the textbooks? Be honest with yourself. If you're gonna answer no, then my answer to you is no, don't buy the book. Save yourself hundreds and hundreds of dollars because if you're not gonna utilize it and read the textbooks, what's the point of having it, you know what I mean? So be honest with yourself. If you're going to read the textbooks, then purchase the textbooks. <laughs> books, books. So the last thing on your syllabus may or may not be important as the other information, but it's still important and it is the grade percentage. With my experience with college, I noticed uh, exams are higher percentage of your grade than anything else. And it's scary because it's either going to make or break your grade for the entire semester. Quizzes, assignments can be like 10 to 20% of your grade. Although it sounds so little, but it makes a world of a difference between a B plus or a minus. And in college, it matters. Those little points matters. There's no such thing as rounding and it sucks. Sucks, sucks, sucks. But you deal with it and you get what you get and you don't throw a fit even though I just want to slam my textbooks against my face. Gosh, Mimi, why are you so violent today? <laughs> but seriously, it's tough. I'm going to be honest with you guys, that has happened to me before where I was so close of getting an A and I settled and got a B. <laughs> I was so close. Don't you hate that when you're like just so close and not really there? But anyways, after going over your syllabus, the next thing you're gonna expect is most likely starting right away. And you're probably like, oh, seriously, I just wanna go home after going over the syllabus. But no, this is college and not high school. Where in high school you go over the syllabus and play icebreaker games? No, that is not always the case in college. After the syllabus, you're gonna start right away and take notes right away and go over the intro of that class. I like that so much better because I dread the icebreaker games. I think it's so awkward, it's forceful, and most of the time, I don't even talk to half of the people I talk to. As much as you really want to just be done with the class, keep in mind that you're gonna have to learn a lot of things in such a short amount of time. So you do want to start right away and get that first few chapters out of the way so that you can get to the fun stuff, you know? And I think that's what, that's what separates you from a high school student and a college student. Having the high school mentality and having the college mentality. Once you realize how important something is to you, especially if it's your education, then you're gonna want to learn and you just wanna keep learning and learning and keep doing well in school. You're doing something for your future and for yourself. All right, so that is what you're gonna expect on your first day of college. If you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for listening to me. I wanna wish you guys the best and good luck on your first day. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs> Look who just woke up from their nap. Do you want to say hi? 
Say hi. Say hi. 